Okay, we're going to do a brief set of notes here on bar graphs. And what are called Pareto charts. P-A-R-E-T-O-C-H-A-R-T-S. Okay, both of these are focused on qualitative data. So this is stuff that is like names and categories, sometimes called categorical data. Um, but this is not numeric data. Okay, so a large graph is like what you're used to. Um, what we would do in a bar graph is we would have a set of categories across the bottom. So let's say I'm, I have a list of like feature length cartoons by various um, distribution groups. So let's say we have Disney, we have MGM, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, Universal Entertainment, 20th Century Fox, and then let's say Kind of create some lines here to give this some definition. Maybe there's 10, 20, 30. Now let's say Disney had 30 some odd uh, movies here, and MGM has maybe, I don't know, maybe sort of five of them. Warner Brothers might have like seven, Universal might have like eight, and 20th Century Fox might have two. Okay, so these bars give us a picture of like how many are in each category. Um, and it's clear like Disney has many more than the others. Um, one of the things, though, that to note is because it's qualitative data, these don't have to be in any particular order. So if you switch the bars around, and let's say put Disney in the middle and Universal at the end, this doesn't change the meaning of the graph. Um, bar charts tend to have, bar graphs tend to have gaps between the bars. Um, and are put in any given order. So this is like the standard, just pretty simple graph. Now, a Pareto chart is similar to a bar graph, but it does it in such a way that you're a little bit closer to a histogram. And we'll take a look at how to do that. Okay, so you can summarize the same data that you did in a bar chart with a Pareto uh, chart. It's still qualitative data, but it looks more like a histogram. So the first thing is, is that when you create the bars, they have to be touching each other. And they also have to be from greatest to least. So, it gives a little bit more information this way, or at least helps us see things a little bit more clearly. So let's say Disney was the greatest one. Then we'd have to put Universal, the second greatest. Warner Brothers, the third greatest. MGM, the fourth. And finally, the smallest being 20th Century Fox. Um, so the Pareto graph takes on a look that is very similar to a histogram, but it is using quant qualitative rather than quantitative data. And ultimately, we get kind of a bit of a shape of the distribution here. By making it greatest to least, we get a sense of how much does the greatest one have in comparison to the next, in comparison to the rest of the pack. So it puts an emphasis on the ones that have the greatest impact. So this may be a little bit more of an enlightening chart than the bar graph, um, because it definitely establishes some sense of order here. 
All right, so that's it about bar graphs and Pareto charts. That's our short, sweet little video for today.